Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 95 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And we're going to do these every day until I clear up my email box because it is getting pretty pretty ridiculous in there. And sorry for the delay in so many of these, but we're just going to jump around. We're going to pick them randomly except for the ones in the last couple days because most of those have to do with the conference. So let's get right to it. This one's called FEIC. Uh, Mark, the FEIC 2018 was incredible. Great in all regards. Much better than I had even hoped for. The schedule got a little delayed and confused, but all told, a great event. I'm sorry for whatever complication you had to take away from the meeting. Uh, I have gone back to see other presentations by you. You are doing a great job at awakening the world with the uh, type of caliber and diversity of people that you interview. I am telling everyone I can of your work and the coming clarity of the Flat Earth issue. May Yahweh, God bless, reward and protect you. I know how to contact you. And that's from, oh, I know how to contact you. Jaron, Patricia, uh, Skiba, Thompson, and Zen. I wrote thanks to Robbie Davidson at the FE quarter headquarters in Canada. If you might share any way to contact other presenters at the FEIC 2018 email, snail mail, their phone, I would, I would, um, talk, want to talk to them directly. I would particularly like to contact Iru Landucci out of Argentina. Incredible his work and that he would make the, uh, the trip to talk at FEIC. Karen B., uh, was had an incredible pers incredible perspective she shares. I know of of m much of what she said, but I love to hear others bringing these subjects to public consciousness. Thanks, and that's from Ted. Very cool, Ted. Let's get to this one's called Your Most Compelling Videos. Hello, Mark. I have stumbled upon your various flat earth videos on YouTube, and I am to say the least intrigued. I am a retired mechanical and electrical engineer and can well see the plausibility of the facts you have brought to light. Naturally, each step down this path raises more questions than there are readily available answers, but the facts are irrefutable. My unresolved um, reconciliations involve the Bible and what it says, but I sense there is no contradictions there. As I said, I'm just starting a question. If the earth is flat, why is there an apparent horizon? Yeah, I got you. Well, be and I'll answer that real quick because I don't get that question very often, uh, which is why do we have horizon at all? And that is because uh, you, the visibility, you're, what you're looking through is only about 99% transparent and you are going to have a horizon eventually. I mean, look, it's just, it's going to appear mostly because again, it's even if you had almost unlimited visibility, you're going to have a horizon. It's just law of perspective. Anyway, I know that the rules of geometry dictate, yeah, there you go, uh, that if we are indeed standing on the surface of a sphere, that there should be horizon, also works in a flat plane, by the way, uh, is the apparent horizon because objects just appear smaller with distance? Yes. Uh, also, why has the myth of a spherical Earth been propagated so thoroughly and, well, yeah, well, because that's what, again, you, you got to watch the clues, but you want to get rid of the fence. We don't act naturally if human beings do not act naturally if we feel we're being confined. That's the short version. And lastly, what is beyond the South Pole? It's a bit, well, your bench, you're going to get to the outer marker and then the edge. Maybe there's more lands. Maybe there's uh, more versions of this out there. Hard to say. Uh, take your pick. There's there's various concepts on that. Uh, the concept of infinity still exists. There are planes above, below, and intersecting the one we call Earth. Best regards, Will. Thank you for that, Will. This one's called News Coverage. Uh, Mark, be sure to wear your I'm Not Logan Paul uh, t-shirt at your next event. <laughs> That's actually not bad. That's a, 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 Somebody should come up with that. That's actually pretty good. Although it gives credit to Logan Paul. So I don't know if I'd do it, but it's a funny shirt. Uh, and he's referencing uh, a news media piece on the whole thing. This one's called Good Good Job Standing Firm. Dear Mark, I thank you for standing firm in your convictions regarding the surprise celebrity. Popularity doesn't guarantee a righteous character. Isn't that the truth? Although I had never heard of this man, also true, uh, your departure made me look into his vids part of my point thank you by the way for saying that because that was absolutely part of my point it's like okay logan paul who the heck is he i don't know but mark just left uh all right who is logan paul then you start typing into your phone part of why i did it 
uh, because I'm going to remind people that's you guys have heard me say this on a previous show. I am like the guy that goes into the parole hearing uh, on a mass murder (laughs) because they get get up for parole hearings every once in a while. And the the parole board doesn't know, you know, they don't have any context, really. They only have what's in the folder in front of them. That's why family members show up at those things and read statements and say, oh, yeah, just in case you forgot, this guy over here should never, ever be allowed out. And yes, there is for me a thing called social media jail, and he should be in it forever. Think that's too extreme? Hey, fine. I believe in justice. I believe in conviction. What do you believe in? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Maybe look into his vids, and his character is heinous. Oh, awesome. I didn't even know how to spell heinous, and uh, but I, 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 I recognize the how it was laid out. Uh, he appears to be someone who is willing to do anything to gain popularity. Absolutely, positively. This is one of my f- favorite emails so far. Uh, you did well to disassociate with him in the public forum. Carry on, Karen Jean. You are very welcome, Karen. Thank you for sending that. This one's calling... I'm sorry, this one's called Looking for Part 2 of Strange World 23. Hi, Mark. I've recently been spending a lot of time looking at all the Flat Earth videos on the internet, but didn't really become serious about searching and researching until I came across one of your Flat Earth Clues videos. Since finding them, I have been going through all of your videos sequentially, beginning with the clues and then your Strange World videos. I have come to episode 23, and I hear that the interview uh, has been continued on the channel Perceptions by Jonathan from Jersey. Uh, but if I have found the correct channel, it seems that nearly all videos have been taken down. I would really like to hear the finale of the Strange World 23 interviews. Is there any way I can get a link or a download? That's Clinton from Canada. Uh, no, I, I, I do not uh, do not have any way to get that. Uh, Jonathan from Jersey has gone missing. I have had rumors, which I am not going to necessarily expand on during this thing uh, but he's he's gone from what i can tell so uh, sorry i i can't can't help you there with the ex- the expansion of strange world 23 but there's lots of other programs you can listen to better than that this one's called kudos to you do not have to read on air well you know what i'm gonna uh, way to go, Mark. You showed the utmost class by sticking to your convictions while at the same time not causing any further rifts in the movement. Also part of why, why I did what I did. I cannot speak for everyone and do not know the reactions you have or will be getting, but to me, you just earned more credibility. All the best and keep up the good work. Stay flat, brother. Bill Duke. Thank you for that, Bill. Uh, let's see here. This one's called Not For On Air. Uh, but I will not read the name, but I'm going to read the, the content. Uh, hey, Mark, wow, I was way off. From Alan Alda to Logan Paul, it was the right choice to leave. Sorry it came out this way. All the best. And I will not say his name because he asked me, well, not to say his name on air, which is fine. And he'll appreciate that. He's one one of my regular email guys. All right, let's get back into, what's this one called? Flat Earth. Mark, I was able to watch your video and it was really encouraging, but I'm finding it difficult to convince my colleagues. Please help. Can you send me the Bible scriptures supporting Flat Earth? And hopefully, did I send this to him? Uh, No, I have not sent this. Oh, because it was just yesterday. So I will email this guy a link to the... um, Oh, wow. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Rob Skiba... (laughs) <laughs> uh, gl- testing the globe.com. Wow. It is early. Sorry guys. I'm, I'm trying to do this first thing in the morning. Cause I have to take a family member to a doctor appointment. Um, so I'm trying to get this knocked out early before I get out of here. Uh, this one, let's just jump around. We'll, we'll start picking some of these randomly. Now this one's called strange world. <laughs> Mark, I hope you get to see this email as I know you must get hundreds. Uh, I do actually get more than hundreds. I am a married father of two who listens to your Strange World shows on YouTube on my phone regularly, usually while in bed. I remember being told about the spinning globe when I was about 12 by my science teacher in school, and it really scared and confused me. I could never get my head around it. I see what you did there. Then, about two or three years ago, while browsing YouTube one evening, I came across a video mentioning the flat flat stationary Earth. I opened it, watched it, and then after thinking it was a pile of BS, I clicked on a different one. 
Yeah, there was your problem. You started clicking, and then you're you're doomed at that point. Uh, over the last couple of years, I've gone from being 50% sure of the Earth being flat to 98%. I also know NASA didn't land anyone on the moon because the moon is just a light in the sky. I saw it shining this morning, and the clouds around it were glowing. I thought to myself, how could the clouds around it be glowing if the moon is thousands of miles away in a vacuum of space? Jaronism, yourself, and Rob Skiba have changed my life fundamentally. FV is the subject people like to ridicule. Even my wife says she isn't interested when I explain all the problems with the globe theory and the fact that NASA is a crock of you-know-what. I think you guys will be the ones who make this a worldwide belief eventually, and you already have made huge strides in the last three years. As a practicing Roman Catholic, I believe that God made the firmament above us, and the sun is not 93 million miles away. The moon is self-illuminating and not 240,000 miles away in space. I take great comfort listening to this show and watching the FE videos, and I want you to know that there must be thousands just like me. How about millions, man? Uh, who believe the, uh, the truth, so keep fighting the good fight. Hopefully you might read this letter on one of your shows so I get to hear it. Uh, if not, it's just nice to say hi to you. Great work, Mark, and thank you for everything you do. Thank you for being in the front lines, for taking the abuse and the ridicule it takes to reveal the truth that the rest of us aren't brave enough to. Kindest regards, Colin Larkin, uh, Sidcup, Sid, Sidcup, UK. And yeah, you know what? By the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something new now. If you guys want me to tell you, I mean, you should be listening to all these anyway, right? Uh, if you want me to tell you what show they're on, just put that in your email. It's like, please tell, like what he did. Please tell me what show it's going to be on, so I can tune in and listen. Uh, I will tell you what show it is, but I'm not going to give you a date timestamp. So that's as far as I'm not going to say it's at the 41 minute mark. No, not going to do that. But I will tell you what show it's on if you ask me. This one's called School Board. Hi, Mark. I thought I would pass this along. I'm a fellow researcher and a flat earther for the most part, thanks to you. Still feel there is much to discover. However, the earth is not a globe. I thought you would find this of great interest. My daughters are 12 and 13. We live in Canada, Ontario, to be exact. My children are currently in geography class and learning about the globe. My youngest told me today that the teacher asked if any of the children believe in flat earth. Oh, boy. Uh, one boy raised his hand. The teacher went out of his way to make a fool of this boy. My daughter said he held his own, but the teacher convinced the other children to ridicule him. Oh, I'd like to meet this teacher. My daughter then spoke up and said you could explain a plane flying around a globe in level flight. He said, you're stupid. <laughs> she still held her own. Uh, said She said, explain eight inches per mile squared. He said, I think you should stick to mul multiplication and improve your comprehension. We He would not address any questions and made the children feel like fools, and he did write down all the names of the children who believed or dared to question the globe model. Ooh. Oh, I'm, I'm not liking this. Fast forward to this evening. Turns out the Durham School District Board held emergency meetings prior to school starting. The government of Canada has issued a blanket statement to conduct flat earth inquiries. What? Is this true? And to reinforce the globe theory model to any and all schools in Ontario... And I'm assuming cross Canada wide in every province. If I can get the paperwork to the mandate, it's yours. I'll keep you posted. Kind regards, Jeff. Yeah, somebody look into that when you get a chance. I'll I'll try to do it when I when I have time. But somebody check into what Canada may be doing with their public school system. That's a little bit alarming. That won't help, but still. This one's called Thank You for Your YouTube Documentary. Oh, hang on, I'm going to have to. One second, I'm going to paste this into something because the font is just tiny. Okay, this one's called Thank You for Your YouTube Documentary, God's Enclosed Earth. Dear Mark, I just finished your YouTube documentary and really enjoyed how through the scope thorough the, sc the, the scope and research was. I started questioning everything a few months ago when I was getting nowhere when trying to address climate change. I started with David Icke's work on the Illuminati, then drifted into Agenda 21, Flat Earth, NASA, and now Scientism. As a former science teacher, it has been one fuse blown after another. I am grateful to know the truth, but now find myself in the quandary of what's next. I so appreciate the thoughtfulness and time you took to make your documentary as you break things down into manageable pieces. However, I was not satisfied with the three steps you suggested at the end. My conclusions are help others to wake up and create a new life and community, growing your own food and saving your own seeds, and unschool, ooh, good word, unschool your children. I am inclined to create art and books that support this awakening. 
Also, I am not sure I know what to believe about the moon and the firmament and my relationship with God. I am spiritual, believe in love and the law of attraction, but I am not sure what to think of the idea of God looking down on me. As someone who has nothing to hide, this idea doesn't scare me, but I wonder why you lean toward there being a benevolent God watching, rather than a Luciferian one who hijacked this world long ago, uh, who is trying to control everything. I lean towards a darker theory because it explains all the wars, hate, division, and missing children. Perhaps you address this in a more recent video. If not, I'd like to know why not also explore whether there could be a darker force at play. It seemed like you were trying to avoid the possibility by giving NASA and others the benefit of the doubt that they mean no harm. Uh, what if it is true that there are entities uh, who were put in place to, to divert people from the FE religions to the religion of scientism so that they could be manipulated and controlled? What if it were true that all the 9,000 people employed by the USGS need to lose their jobs in order for the Grand Awakening to happen? I don't know. It feels so overwhelming, but I think your documentary is both awesome, helpful, positive, yet missing an important part of the picture. I'm curious what you think, if you're willing to write back. I look forward to seeing more of your documentaries. Thanks again. Sincerely, Sandy Wold out of Ithaca, New York. And yeah, Sandy, uh, what you just said there, I, I don't generally go down dark paths if I can help it. I try to remain positive. Uh, you know, doom, doom and gloom has its place. I suppose, but eventually the story has to conclude one way or the other, and I'm going to go with glass half full. I do. Whenever, whenever possible, I try to minimize the negativity, and that's my explanation. I, I'm just, I mean, I've tried to, you know, do you, do you, and I, I know where you're going here, and again, it's part of the, the bigger picture, which is, do you want the happy popcorn ending? Or do you want the award-winning tragedy? Because if you look at the the best the the, the Academy Award-winning winning films for Best Picture over the years, most of them are tragedies, for whatever reason. The people they seem to resonate more. So that's more. It's you know people are more serious about it. They don't want happy. You know if they applaud at the end, uh, very few movies will win the Best Picture. It's always something you know, that has sort of a bittersweet ending. Okay, moving on. This one's called No Subject. Sir, <laughs> okay, I like your video about the flat earth things, and I believe in the Bible too, but I have a question would totally be happy if you could please answer me. So, where in the Bible says the earth was flat, and if so, this is not his, English is not his native, native tongue, guys. And if so, why not demonstrate... <laughs> although I loved how you spelled it, uh, made a video to prove using a strong enough laser too. Uh, we, okay, we are, okay, first off, we've already been working on the, um, the, the experiments involving lasers and long-distance photography and so on and so on. Um, as far as the Bible saying the earth is flat, no, 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 you're gonna have to go the other way. Find me a verse in the Bible other than Isaiah 40:22 that says the earth is a globe. Because that's the only verse in the entire thing. So, and, and you can look it up. It says, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Well, circle isn't ball. It isn't globe. It isn't sphere. It's just a circle. A dinner plate is circular. Your dining room table could be circular. Your hubcap, if they have hubcaps anymore, uh, are circular. So, sorry, we, we've got that covered. The, the, it is a flat earth Bible. No question. Uh, the fact that people are holding on to one verse and trying to use it as veto, veto power should be a testament to that. Moving on. This one's called Flatter Thoughts. This one's to Dave and Mark. Okay. Uh, I'm sending this to both of you in separate emails. Mark, he referenced you in this video, plus I have watched some of your stuff. Uh, Rob Skiba and a host of others. Thanks. I have some questions and comments and about some of the things you talked about in your video, Flat Earth and the Biggest Lie of All. Oh, by the way, I didn't know about the, the Biggest Lie of All for a while. You know, the, the Flat Earth clues have been mirrored so many times. I, I literally don't have an, any idea of where they all are. Uh, I have watched hours upon uh, hours of Flat Earth videos and I almost have no reservations left. There you go almost no reservations left at declaring I am a flat earther, but I do have some things that I want to mention things that I am sure in time with research will be answered. One, the GPS system. I have watched some of the videos that say that the GPS system doesn't work in the Southern areas or that it doesn't work in the ocean. Yet I personally know many people that sail in the Southern ocean and use GPS all the time. Some of these people have made circumnavigation of our flat earth. Plus I know from my own experience that there is navigation and system in place that works wherever you go on the plane. 
I think the quest is to find out how the system works because the answer, I'm sure, would uh, answer many other questions. All right. Apparently, you did not watch the Flat Earth Clue 7 or 9. Uh, that's that's the first thing I'd refer to you to, which is the GPS system. I address it in pretty good detail. Uh, two, with people sailing the plain and the southern oceans, there has to be an answer as to their routes. Yeah, there's, there absolutely has to be an answer to the routes. Show me what they use. Would look like in a flat earth uh, with the time and distance they travel, they travel taken into account. Uh-huh. And again, how would you measure, measure time? Well, you know time, but how would you measure distance if you're sailing out there? Exactly. Uh, what's going to, what, how do you know this? Is it star charts? Or are you just, is that just for general navigation? How do you measure distance without GPS? You, well, you'll know where I'm going eventually. Uh, most people sail from Panama to the Galapagos to French Marquis, then island hopping around the South Pacific after taking a break in New Zealand. Australia, while some will head north across the equator line to the northern area into the Marshall Islands for the southern cyclone season. They then head to Fiji along various routes to continue island hopping across ocean to Indonesia, then choose a route across the Indian Ocean, usually to Madagascar. After a stay there exploring, they head south to Cape of Good Hope. Oh my God, I'm getting dizzy. Uh, stopping in South Africa, then finally across the Atlantic at various points of South America and the Caribbean. Uh, so he goes on like this. It obviously is a big sailor. Um... Da, da, da. Okay, let's let's skip past all the all the all the things he's got there as far as how people are going to different routes. Uh, I wanted to present this information to you as it's not often used when talking about flat Earth. Well, yeah, because sailboats are as slow as dirt. Uh, I also want to share that I sail as well. Yeah, shocking, and my memories and current sailing have been affected by my discovery of the flat Earth. I see the horizon much differently. When you are offshore and lost sight of land, the water surrounds you flat everywhere you look. It's like being in a bowl of water. All you can see in every direction is a flat horizon. How some could mistake this circle of water for a curving horizon, I can understand that. My first time offshore, I was amazed at the appearance of the flat horizon. I always chalked this up to being so small and Earth so large, I couldn't see any curvature. However, after learning more about the flat Earth and supposed curve, I realized that I couldn't see the curve because there was none. I will look at things differently from now on and do some of the fact-finding with my Binos and radar uh, for without that magic, inexplicable thing called gravity, everything should just shoot off into space and be unseen over the supposed curve. I'm headed out next week and will reply uh, back with my experience. Thanks for exposing the truth, Barry. All right. Moving on. This one's called Just Wanted to Add. Hi, Mark. Just wanted to add that lifting the lid, his name is Robin, sounds like he's going to be uh, the star of this entire documentary, him and a astrocosmologist. I think this film is going to be awesome. Also, Rob is giving you good competition as a flat earth documentary star. That's from Carol, Carolyn, uh, Carolyn Gutman Day. And... Uh, I, yeah, no, they did good work. They're doing good work out there. There's some great people out in the UK, uh, across the pond doing flat earth experiments and flat earth activism, doing great flat earth activism. As a matter of fact, I mean, yes, in the States, we, we try to do a lot more flash and stuff. They're much more serious over there, but they do good stuff. No question. Great stuff. This one's called real globe perspective. Howdy, Mark. He actually spelled howdy, H-O-W-D-E-E, -E. that's a new one. Just wondering, why does our world not look like the enclosed pick? I might be slightly exaggerated, but it does make perfect sense from a global point of view. Have yourself a great day, Douglas in Canada, and I will click on it. And yeah, why doesn't our look, it basically, it's a, it's a picture of, it looks like a Sydney Harbor in Australia where from a fisheye lens it's not even it's not even a thousand feet up and it shows a massive massive curved earth yeah why doesn't the world look like that on a regular basis well because remember if it's if the world even if the world is eight thousand miles wide uh you're not going to see it you know, mainstream science is right from that standpoint you're not going to see it from the ground which is why anyone that says oh i've seen i've seen the curve of the earth from a mountain or the beach the beach throws me when people say that. It's like, no, no, no. You want to see the curve from the beach. You're not actually seeing the curve, which is why I say, look, if you think you see the curve, take a picture of it, send it to me, and I'll quit Flat Earth forever. And no, the Lake Pontchartrain, 
bridge does not count. Anyone that looks at the Lake Pontchartrain Bridge and says, oh, that's that's obviously the curvature of the Earth. Uh, well, great, then the Earth is, what, 50 miles wide, if that. Uh, the, the curvature is so unbelievably exaggerated in that picture. It, it, fisheye doesn't even begin to do that justice. So, no. No, we, we debunked that thing in two seconds. And I, I love that people are using that. In fact, there was an, what I loved was there was an ex-astronaut, that civilian astronaut that uh, went after Andrew from, um, from his YouTube channel on a radio show, and they videotaped it. His name, the, the astronaut's name is Richard Garriott, like the, the hotel Marriott, but with a G. And he came on. He actually brought that picture with him. It's like, wow, if an astronaut's bringing that picture, that's a bad, bad sign. You guys got to come up with better arguments than that. In fact, why would he, why would he bring that picture instead of just just sticking with the, the, the NASA stock footage? <laughs> anyway, it's like he just went on the internet. It's like how to debunk flat earth, and, and he went through a few videos. My phone is ringing off the hook this morning. Is there anything happening that I don't know about? It's ringing more than usual. I mean, my phone rings a lot. That's true. But it's uh, it's a little early in the morning for me to get a whole bunch. Um, this one's called what? It's called Forward. Uh, good day, Mr. Sergeant. You are incredibly brave. My personal hero. Extremely quick-witted. Ever so slightly arrogant in a sexy way. Ooh. Maybe I should be reading this privately. And you have changed the world. Well, I don't know if I've done that yet. Uh, thank you for changing mine. I am very grateful. I agree. Once an open mind is exposed to F.E. truth, it becomes awakened and life becomes an adventure again. I hope to attend the Denver conference. I would be very honored to meet you. I have a feeling a single woman from Canada need not worry about attending said conference alone. Uh, I will certainly make a brilliant change in being alone with the truth up here in Canada. I'm forwarding a picture in the event you see a small person... Oh, wait, did I not see this picture with a big... I, you know, I never even looked at this picture. Uh, along with a big smile, pat patiently waiting in whatever long line is necessary to shake your hand. Sincerely yours, uh, Eddie Cassidy. Hang on, I have not seen this picture yet. Oh, you know what? I, I, I Well, I remember I remember her name, of course. But no, but I, did, I never saw this picture. That's from Eddie up in Canada. Oh, that's a nice picture. That was really... Yeah, and I got to meet her uh, both at the billboard thing where I introduced her to Bronca and Jim and I also got a chance to spend some time with her at the Flat Earth Mixer the VIP Mixer on Wednesday night so I, I'm sorry I'm sorry Eddie I did not uh, I did not see the picture you attached I, I get so many emails that sometimes I forget to open the attachment so thank you for that that's really really nice in fact you know what I will write her back and say I'm sorry I didn't get to see the picture hopefully she'll listen to this though uh, this one's called Flat Earth. Go figure. Hi, Mark. I love your videos. And since I discovered FE, I have not watched TV, but have been watching videos. That being said, the planes flying on a globe Earth, which may or may not be our reality, would not have to alter their altitude because the curvature, because of the curvature, people visualize planes flying on a stationary globe and how they go up to the top and then down. However, on a globe Earth, oh, here we go. Gravity pulls everything to the center, thus giving a person the feel as if they're on the top of the world. Uh, you know how a treadmill works, sort of uh, the same of walking on a flat surface. Now visualize a plane on top of a giant ball and the ball spinning towards the plane. The plane would be there parallel to the top and not need to dip or rise to maintain its presence course. Now for the world spinning at 100 miles an hour, I'm sorry, 1,000 miles an hour. Visualize yourself driving a motorcycle at 100 in a car or in a car. Big difference is the windshield makes you feel like you're hardly moving. Now visualize a car driving around a 12-mile circle at half a mile an hour, taking 24 hours. You could have a grain of salt on a dashboard and it would not move at all. Just because I debunked a few of the common clues does not debunk flat earth. I don't use those as... Um, as clues those weren't part of my thing at the very least the movement makes people think for themselves do research and question everything uh and that is the ultimate way to learn keep up the good work i really hope it's flat by the way from south of buffalo uh at an elevation of 450 feet above toronto i can see the city from 95 miles away clearly yeah absolutely and if you look at the infrared footage that's been out there recently uh that's the really really great stuff so this one's called I love your vids, man. I am so happy there are people like you who are spreading the truth. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Neil. Literally, he put that entire thing in the title. The, the title is the email. There's literally, this mail has no content. So thank you to Neil Viegas. Awesome. 
You don't have to put the whole thing in the in the title though. That's put it put it in the body. This one's called NASA turns 60 and is reinventing itself for the SpaceX era. Take a look at the BS report of NASA fake trash. I, I'm not going to swear on the show if I can help it. It's on CNET.com. NASA turns 60 and it's reinventing itself for the SpaceX era. That's a CNET.com uh, article. As space becomes just another place to do business, NASA looks to keep its edge. <laughs> yeah. I don't encourage anybody to read that article, but know that they will be out there. This one's called On Maps, Apps, and Their Globes. Hey, Brother Mark, any idea how it is that Bing, Google Map, Dudes, and Dudettes... <laughs> uh, I love when people throw words out that I never ever use. Don't have a ship or boat on their recommended travel mode options. Or is it hidden in plain sight in the menu somewhere? Don't we use ships, uh, trawlers, clippers even? Reason being, I wanted to find out the distance between Cape Town, South Africa, and Nairobi, Kenya from the South Ring, uh, Pole, Antarctica. Cheers, Kevin. Hmm. Good point. Somebody should look into that. Why it don't have a ship or boat in the recommended travel mode options? Huh. Huh. I don't know. Somebody look into that. This one's called Chevy in Space. Hey, Mark, what do you think? Usable? I found it on Facebook in my feed. Uh, yeah, somebody is doing... Hey, let me click on this. this is, that's from Clint in Saskatoon, Canada. He sends me quite a bit of stuff. The... Uh, I don't... I don't... I don't... I don't. Sorry, Clint. I don't see where the link's going. I don't think there was anything in there. He pulled it down. I'm sorry. This, again, I'm jumping around. This particular email is what was from September. Uh, you know, I got to get caught up. I'm going to keep doing them every week. I'm going to keep doing as many or every day. I'm going to keep doing as, as many. I'm not going to do multiple in a day, but I will like do one tomorrow, even though I have a show in the evening. So this one's called authentic intent channel update. Mark, thank you for all your contributions. And that's from authentic intent who I met at the conference and his channel update on YouTube is called uh, authentic intent channel update from the channel authentic intent yep it's great to meet you at the conference sorry i had to leave early but these things happen this one's called new fan old earther mark i first want to thank you for creating your series on the flat earth clues it has made a great source of easy to share icebreaker type topics i have been following the topic for several years and so you know where i am coming from i will give you a brief background my early childhood started in pasadena california and my father, who after leaving the Army Air Corps was employed by McDonnell Douglas Rockets. He was a machinist and builder of sorts. Later, he transferred to a great job at JPL in the hills of Pasadena. Though I don't know exactly what he built, I do know he worked on a fabrication for every rocket series before Apollo and finished his career with the Viking space probes one and two. Backing up to my childhood, you can imagine that my room was filled with collectibles from the rocket missions and Apollo missions. It was a policy of JPL to hand out public released photo packets to all the employees to share with family about the great work they are doing. So my walls were covered in large and small high quality images of the moon and later some from the first images received from Mars. I tell you this because I'm very proud of my father, his work and the things he shared with us. He has long since passed away, and as a young adult, when I first started hearing about rumors that the moon, landing were moon landings were possibly faked or the whole program was a sham, it rocked my world. But I worked through it, and I've settled on the fact that my father did honest work and provided for his family. Yeah, it's very true. I mean, I'm not knocking any of the wrench turners at NASA. Look, they they worked. They thought they were what the, they thought they were doing was was real, honest work. So I, I I can't put any blame on them. That's absolutely. What are how the NASA criminal minds did with the materials he helped build have no effect on that pride. Yep, absolutely. You should still feel pride. I am currently working through the data you have and many others have shared about the travel in the Southern Hemisphere and about Antarctica. These two topics have much to teach. I have attached a link to a video I came across where a young lady is. Uh, wow. I do not know. Even know I've never even seen that word. In, in, emphatical? Is, do you mean em, emphatical? Uh, that the Apollo program <clears throat> did in fact breach the Van Allen belts and using solar flares and such to ensure the astronauts were not harmed because the solar flares would have helped. Uh -huh. As she touches on the bombardment, uh, the atmosphere, but diverges away quickly. So I would like to know if you have seen her material before. I doubt it. Uh, I am so excited. The FE has started holding conferences. I hope to attend one or more soon. Yes. 
Apollo flew through the Van Allen belts going to the moon. Be safe and enjoy the ride. Sincerely, Bradley Otto. Cool. This one's called your Flat Earth App. Hmm. Hi, Mark. Gabe Munoz. Munoz here. I have been following a TKNY Robkins for 20 years and David... Oh, wow. I, I, don't know, I don't know why this typing is so bad. David Wolf, his nutritionist for about 12. He turned me on to the Flyer Theories. I am I your app and wanted to know the moment you were about to explain each section noise squeak. squeak. <laughs> and I could get the end of on your planes. Wow. I don't know how he's typing this. Uh, part seven and nine. It's really weird. I am really digging what I see. I would love to know more and see if you'll be in Orange County anytime soon for any uh, Flat Earth conventions. Warm regards, Gabe. And yeah, the, get a member when I made the clues and there's a little popping noise when I, when I first started making them. I was using just, I didn't know anything about anything when it came to audio or video making. And I was just using a, um, a cheap little USB uh, uh, headset for gaming headset it was like 20 bucks and uh used it for just little various things and then i just started recording on it so and and i would hit um and I had, it's kind of a squeaky chair and the the recording device the, the microphone actually picked up every once in a while the clicks i would make on the mouse and i didn't really care about editing at the time i'm way better at it now so and that microphone is long long gone so thank you for that this one's called hot air balloon mark I am interested in flat earth, but well, my question is, how come you don't start a fundraiser to collect money to construct a hot air balloon and go up yourself with a real camera and take the necessary shots to prove the world has no curvature? Should be easy enough, right? Here's a link to something similar, but unfortunately, he used a GoPro cam. Well, okay, there's part of the problem. Best regards, Christian. And yeah, I think that Mad Mike would be a perfect candidate for that. Instead of instead of working on that that next generation rocket balloon hybrid rocket thing he, he's thinking about, I think he should replicate the Red Bull jump. He'd be the perfect guy to go up there. Put somebody get start a fundraiser and, and get Mad Mike and a Red Bull jump thing. And he'd do it we'll do it for real this time. We'll do it with better cameras and the flat cameras. We won't show that ridiculous GoPro lens uh, that I don't know how much Red Bull spent to do it. Couldn't have been that much though. No, well, you say that, but it might might actually be much. Okay, so this one's called First Episode of Murphy Brown, CBS 2018. And yeah, uh, that's from Authentic Intent. It, it was great because uh, Murphy Brown, you know, they, they did an, uh, doing an encore presentation of some television shows because we literally run out of media, original media. So now we're, we're, we're doing encore presentations of, of various sitcoms and Murphy Brown's one of them. And uh, in the very first episode, she mentions in passing, again, it's the writers, it's not her, uh, something to the effect of, you know, you also thought the earth was flat type thing. So it's great. Yeah, the writers pick it up because they're, they're looking for trends too. Writers scour the internet looking for interesting things to, to write about. And flat earth is one of the most, if not the most interesting thing ever. This one's called, I came across your videos. Mark, first I want to tell... You, how lucky I am. Your video came across my path. Wow. I feel bigger and better. Thank you for your time and effort to make this and other videos. To put it out there is so big you have done. You must, again, English, not the first language. Uh, you must know that to do this, you have been giving this gift. I am without a word. I can't describe with words what this knowledge change all of it. Shock, but better to know knowing there is much more than what we know is uplifting. My question to you is, what can I do to contribute to this knowledge? Please would love to have a conversation over the phone. If you sometime would be great, here is my number and you can reach me anytime. Uh, uh, I can never thank you enough. My soul will remember this moment, the moment of true. Ooh, I like that. I mean, I know that the English is wrong, but I, I like that, the moment of true. Best of luck to you, uh, our fellow human being. And that's from Giuseppe. You know what? I may call him. I got his phone number. It looks like an American number. I may I may call that guy. I don't call most people. But it, it every once in a while, you know, if I get inspired enough, I will I will spend a few minutes and call people. 
This one's called PLSS, Portable Life Support System and Backpack. Mark, I'm a big fan. My backstory is the same as everyone's. Textbook trajectory from non-believer to believer in less than a year. For what it's worth, you now have an internationally renowned bass player as a fellow believer now. Uh, by the way, great job tagging both Patricia and... Oh my God. All right, I'm not reading the rest of that. Uh, and... Oh. Uh, your episode about the horseshoe nail was brilliant, extremely simple, focused, and convincing. A total deal breaker for moonwalking. Yeah, I've looked pretty thoroughly into the life support system backpack, and I think you could do the same kind of episode focusing on just that. Extremely complex and expensive. Yeah, same principle. A total deal breaker because it doesn't work perfectly. The entire pro if if it doesn't work perfectly, the entire program is impossible. Any chance on a meetup in Orlando? Uh, thanks, uh, Beaver Felton. And yeah, um, it, w there are meetups in, in Florida. I don't know how many of them I'm going to be able to attend because there's just so many out there. There's hundreds across the United States, but I will I will try to get down to Florida if I get a chance. Whatever, whatever is going to happen down there, and what he's referring to, by the way, is the spacesuit, the the clue that I did called um, uh, the the lost nail, which goes into the astronaut suit. The astronaut suit cannot work the way it's advertised, and if the astronaut suit is wrong, if it cannot the work the way it's advertised, then everything is wrong. The entire space program is wrong. Moving on. This one's called Flat Earth Meetup in Bentonville last night. Mark, just wanted to let you know the meetup in last night in Bentonville was a success. We had 11 people uh, total show up for the event, nine of which I'd never seen before. People drove as, f drove as far away as three hours to come and hang out. Uh, it was incredible. In my three years in this journey, I've never got to meet another Flat Earther other than my mother. It was so weird to be able to talk to other individuals about everything I have learned over the past three years and them not look at me like I'm crazy. It was great to have the opportunity to con congregate with people from all over, all with different walks of life, and all have one thing in common, and that's knowing that the earth is flat. Thank you so much for the promo and everything you guys do day in and day out in the battle against mainstream science. And I pray that you and everyone out there continue to have faith and fight the good fight. Stay flat, my friend. Randy from Bentonville. Yeah. Just one of the people I do meetups for. As a matter of fact, I've got two more sitting in my email box that I have to make for actually three more for, for December. Uh, I got to get those things out here pretty quick. All right. This one's called another veterans FE evidence. Ooh, good. Hello, Mark. I'm a veteran that flew in the Navy EP three Orion surveillance plane. And I have a few things that could be possible evidence of the flatter theory. I am not completely convinced of FE, but I see a lot of indications that point in that direction. I am also not a Christian, so I don't buy into the arguments that because primitive people's poetic description of the earth is somewhat similar to modern FE theory that somehow proves the flat earth. I'm an analytical, logical, and open-minded. However, and research conspiracies. So that got me into studying flat earth theory somewhat. I read that sentence as it was. Uh, the first thing that you may not, not know about, although it has been released to the public, has to do with military communications. Like your guest from Australia was talking about when I was a linguist, when I wasn't riding on the P3, we were told that the transmissions we would receive for analysis at our base were transmitted either via satellite or via the U-2 spy plane. At that time, around the year 2000, the public had been told that the U-2 was no longer in use. Several years later, they announced that they were using, they were still in using the U-2. Even though they said we had satellites, they could have been lying and using the U-2 for all our communications. Or what I believe more likely is that they do have some satellites, but they're too expensive or difficult to use for most purposes. The other thing I wanted to let you know about was a special mission I supported for a few weeks. I flew some missions on a special all-gray P-3 that I was led to believe was used for the CIA, but they referred to them as special projects. Our normal EP-3s were painted white and black, but this one was all gray, had a smaller crew, and didn't have the same equipment that our planes had. It was the, I was the only linguist on board and was basically just there as a warning system not to collect any intelligence. As we were flying to our destination, I asked one of the crew what the mission was, and I was told that they had a high-power camera to take intelligence pictures of installations from a distance. Now, this doesn't prove that we don't have reconnaissance satellites, but it shows how we could have used those kind of photographs without using satellites. Coincidentally, that was also the original mission of the U-2, taking surveillance photos of Russia. 
I'm sure I'm not supposed to talk about that mission, but I thought it might be relevant to your research. Let me know if you have any questions. That's from Carl. And I won't say his last name, just in case he gets in trouble. Moving on. This one's called Flat Earth Clues Part 7, Long Haul. Mark, I hope you are still taking emails. Yes, I am. I'm still on the fence about this flat earth thing, but you are opening my eyes. The most convincing thing for me so far are the plane routes that you almost covered in this video. I saw another video that covered flight routes more extensively. I fly from Los Angeles to Beijing or Shanghai five to six times a year, and I always wondered why they fly a northerly route. And then you take the flat earth map and you see it's a straight line flying the same route the way they do. The other video did something like you did from Australia to Brazil or something flying through Europe or something and you find on the flat earth map it's also a straight line. My point is for the masses who are that are not sophisticated as most and can easily get lost or left behind by your video, pointing out flight routes uh, more would convince more I believe. You hardly touched on the flight routes. You saying do your own study. I don't think that is enough if you're trying to reach more of the masses. That's from Mario in Carson, California. I look. There's a lot of people that again. I am the um, uh, freshman recruiter. You know, I'm, I'm kind of just showing people the the basics of, of what to, and people just ran with it. And and not only did did people cover more flight routes, which was great. They were making up stuff. For, you know, running, doing more tests that I didn't even remotely suggest. Uh, the most obvious being that everybody ran out to the beach with with digital cameras and just started zooming in on things. <sighs> Fantastic idea. Wonderful. Glad I could help. Moving on. Oop. Oop. Got to delete that one. That was the long haul. All right. This one's called Moon Gives Its Own Light. Hi, Mark. I'm Fitzroy from Trinidad and Tobago, the last island on the island chain in the Caribbean. And this, these were my observations. And he sent me some pictures. No, I'm not opening an 18 meg. Oh, it's an 18 Meg video. All right, I will check that out when I get a chance. Anyone, you guys can send me any pictures and videos you want. And by the way, my physical address is literally in the body of uh, the description of, of every video I make. So you can send me anything hard copy there as well. This one's called Slides, Glides, and Rides. Hi, Mark. I was listening to your show the other day and I wanted to shoot you an email regarding the below. Uh, 12 slides, prepper guide, paper from air traffic controller, coast to coast interviews. Would you mind sending these to me? I appreciate it. Thank you, Zach. And yep, I sent him everything. Uh, real quick what they are. Uh, the 12 slides are from just Jack. And he, he says he can convince anybody of the flat earth with just using 12 slides or at least give you know, plant the seed. The prepper's guide is a survival guide that I wrote uh, while kind of analyzing the whole Katrina thing. It's called Empty Shelves. I can send that to anybody for free. All you have to ask me. Uh, the paper from the air traffic controller, that was when the flight instructor and the air traffic controller were having a debate on my show. And uh, they, weren't, they weren't debating against each other. They were kind of collaborating. They were comparing notes more than anything. And the, uh, one of them wrote a paper that's pretty good. And the Coast to Coast interviews, yes, I've done two interviews on Coast to Coast. And I can't put them up on YouTube because I, I signed a release form saying that I could not put them on YouTube. So if anyone wants them, just shoot me an email saying, hey, can I have the Coast to Coast interviews? And I will fire them to you through email, even though I'm probably not supposed to. Uh, this one's called Earth Plane Flat Island. And that's the name of a video sent to me by a guy named Jerry. Thank you for that. This one's called Azimuthal Equidistant Map. And it was sent to Bob. <laughs> In fact, it's not even, my name's not even on here. I was just copied on it. Okay, let's read it. Hi, Bob. I am trying to get word to Jaronism and Mark Sargent. I found the old AE maps. Oh, I see. From earthnullskull.net at archive.org. Here's the earliest one I could find. It's, uh, okay, yeah, I'll check that out. And that's from Mark Masters. He's got a thing called Shooting Rubber Bands at the Stars. Huh, cool. I will check that out. This one's called Asteroid Shaped Like a Skull to Pass Earth on Halloween. Uh, not again. I know, they're just doing that on a regular basis now. Like every Halloween, supposedly, uh, there's an asteroid that comes by the Earth and it's it's been photoshopped to hell to look like a, a skull. It's not even, it's not even like a, 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 like almost exactly like a skull. And they're doing it with Christmas now. It's just reinforcing space. That's all they're doing now is just, just doing these drum beats. It's like, oh yeah, asteroid, because you're in space. 
uh, Christmas Christmas asteroid because you're in space. Funky weird thing on top of Saturn because you're in space. Same thing. Yeah, check it out if you get a chance. Skull asteroid, NASA Halloween. That's yeah. Ugh, terrible. This one's called First Man. Uh, hi, Mark. Uh, ha ha ha. First Man movie. They made a response to your clues. LOL. That's from Michael. Yeah, if you don't know what I'm talking about, is the life of Neil Armstrong to kind of coincide with because 2019 is the big anniversary of the Apollo missions from 1969. So 1969 to 2019. And you can check that out if you, if you get a chance. First Man video is the first video ever officially where Hollywood faked the moon mission. And uh, that's what I said in the, in the clues back in the very first clue I did uh, three and a half years ago, which was uh, the empty theater, which said that we've never made a fake movie about the moon, you know, fake moon mission movie. And they just did it finally in 2019. First one of its kind. And I still haven't watched it yet. I may watch it and then use some of the clips from it. Uh, but not not yet. Uh, I, I want because I don't think it's even out on DVD yet. So hopefully some people will will watch it, and I'm I'm giving a chance for the community to tear it apart first. It's it's too easy for me. It's like I'm 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 flattered that they actually made it, but they didn't make it necessarily just for me. It was uh, mostly because of the anniversary that's coming up for Apollo. You would think there'd be more of a celebration of that, but no. Now they're like, eh, maybe we shouldn't talk about it as much. All right, what else we got? Uh, Kyrie Irving of Boston Celtics apologizes for saying the earth is flat. And that's an ESPN story. And, and the story is literally Kyrie Irving, Boston Celtics apologize saying earth flat. Okay. It, and, and I really, this is actually a fun one. I'm not going to end on this one, but anyone that thinks that Kyrie apologized, seriously watch the interview. And it wasn't even a formal interview. He was speaking at a Forbes magazine, um, 30 people under the age of 30 that are, that are doing great things. And I think he's 26 right now. And they, somebody, somebody asked him and it, and somebody recorded it from the audience. It wasn't, it wasn't formally recorded, but what he basically said was, is that he was sorry for all the science teachers that have caught grief because of him. And by that, I mean, most of the inner city, the urban science teachers, because you can imagine, right? You know, you're, you know, the inner city, you're trying to teach a bunch of kids and you're saying, oh yeah, by the way, the earth is a globe. And the, a lot some of these kids are pushing back on the science teachers, quite a few of them saying, yeah, my boy Kyrie, who they look up to a lot more than a science teacher. You got a 26 year old, um, a uh, guy who's, you know, playing basketball for a living, you know, good friends with LeBron James and one of the best players in the NBA. And he says, the earth is flat. Well, who, who has more credibility in that child's eyes? And so the, the science teachers are getting pushback. And so he's got science teachers basically writing him on a regular basis, or if not coming up to him and saying, look, dude, you, you got it. You got to dial this back. I'm, I'm, I'm having a tough time in the class classroom as it is. And so Kyrie said, yeah, you know, I'm sorry about that. No, sorry that they're catching grief. Now he did not backpedal from flat earth, but he did say, I'm sorry. Cause yeah, he should feel a little guilty because he, he, these guys, these science teachers are just getting pummeled out there. And part of it is because of him. So I don't blame him for, for, for saying he's sorry. Now, did he recant flat earth? No, he did not. So you can look that up. If anyone thinks he, he recanted flat earth, do find me the video clip of that because he's said I had 18 months to backpedal. And he hasn't yet. In fact, it wouldn't even matter. Even if he tried to backpedal now, uh, I mean, that, that thing's out there. You know what they say? Everything on the internet sticks. I mean, uh, Shaquille O'Neal was only in Flat Earth for 10 days. And he, uh, he caught so much grief from his sponsors that he said, yeah, all right. You know, he backed off. He makes $20 million a year in endorsements. He doesn't even play basketball anymore. All right. We got a few more we're going to do. This one's called Survival Guide. Mark, would you be so kind? I lost the email containing the attachment you once sent me. Thanks again. Yep, and I sent it again. This one's called Traveling to Mars and Deep Space could, sh could Kill Astronauts by Destroying Their Guts, finds NASA-funded study from The Independent. So theindependent.co.uk, that's actually literally... Well, that's no, not literally. They, they, he changed the title a little bit. The, the story says uh, it says NASA Mars Deep Space Journey. Uh, you know what? I'm going to click on this darn thing. Hang on. I want to read exactly what the title is. It says, oh, that is actually exactly what they say. Traveling to Mars and deep into space could kill astronauts by destroying their guts. This needs to be highlighted. Whatever. Like human eyes? Sounds interesting. Interesting, interesting. All right. It's just another NASA propaganda story. 
Uh, this one's called Believer. Hi, Mark. I live in Thailand. I'm a Brit. Could you do some <clears throat> backup brother buddy, not a troll mate? Could you do... Oh, could you do with some backup a brother buddy, not a troll? Yeah, of course. I, I love having backup and tons of people have my back. Uh, I very rarely do I get troll videos. I think I read one yesterday. I get maybe one out of a hundred is, uh, is, is a troll video or a troll, um, uh, email and one out of probably 500 in voicemails. Now the comment sections in YouTube, that's completely different because they're anonymous and they're cowards. If they had any spine at all, they'd come up to the island and visit me, but they don't still waiting for that day. You'll know when it happens. This one's called test. Hi, Mark. Before I sit here for ages typing, I just want to know this. Is this your email? Am I chatting to Mark Sargent? Kudos to the show, by the way. Just listen to the one on the industrial valve expert. The ISS is a lie. Flat Earth. Very interesting. That's from Andy. And yes, I wrote him back saying it absolutely is my real email. And I'm sure, you know what? Let's do the follow up to that. Let's see how big this email is. Uh, you know what? Let's end. Let's end on this email because it's gonna. Be, it's kind of big. So this is the follow up to what he just said. And he, he wrote me. I wrote him right back, and he wrote me right back. Because if you write me and say, "Is this your email?" Yes, I'll write you back and say, "This is my email." Um, so it's called uh, regarding test. Wow, so cool. Hi, Mark. Andy here from Oxford, England. I'm just an ordinary Joe from England. I'm not academic in any shape, shape, way, or form. I'm as thick as they come. Good with my hands. Can make things. Fix things. I have a really bad memory, so can't retain much in the gray matter. Anyhow, only two or three weeks ago, by accident, I was looking for photos of the moon and came across videos on ETs, UFOs, etc., and all that led to flat earth videos. I had never really thought about the uh, flat earth, although in the back of my mind, I've had some faint recollection that it was something that was taught to me at some point as a child. Yep, you and everybody else. And there it sat in the back of my memory, locked up in some vault until just a few weeks ago. Growing up, th though, I've always felt something was amiss in my world. Things didn't make sense, uh, work out, feel right, or even look right. Now, don't get me wrong, I love my sci-fi movies, and I think they look and sound fantastic. Yeah, me too. But that's just it. Fantastic. It's what they want us to believe. It's that fantastic. It's unbelievable. I've always looked at things like the ISS. I wondered how the hell does that work? All those fragile modules and solar panels just hanging on to each other, supposedly speeding around space without falling apart, let alone thought of any space debris. That's the big one. Space debris hitting it or other satellites. Also, the amount of time astronauts be in the ISS. A spaceship for a two-hour-plus walk on the moon have enough oxygen to spend all that time up there or out there. Why do we never get a film or photo of the Earth? I'm sure... If I was sent into space with a camera, the first thing I would do uh, is take photos of the moon, Earth, and if possible, the stars. And why would you uh, go rock kicking if your life was in danger? <laughs> yes, you could You could tear a hole in your suit. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And they fell all the time. I'm sorry. Every time I fell, these guys fall, fell on the moon, they should be panicked. It's like, check my suit, check my suit. Uh, I could go on and on. I'm just an ordinary guy with no PhD. So for now, I'll leave you to read my little rant. Uh, P.S. I love the one or two of your radio broadcasts I listen to so far. Keep up the good work. I'm sorry I can't subscribe to your YouTube. I suffer badly with anxiety and depression. Oh, and I'm currently working so uh, ever penny count at the moment. Uh, but let's hope with the help of people like you, be it our planet is a globe, not a globe, or any other shape. We, as the majority of the population, are told the truth about this and many other things we are being lied to about. Stay safe, brother. Look after you and your family. Kind regards, Andy and his four-year-old son. Uh, P.S. Sorry for the bad email. It's not my forte. You know what? It was a fine email. I'll take it. It's, uh, you know, there's no, no such thing necessarily as a, as a really bad email. I've read, I've read much worse than that. So thank you for that. All right. So moving on. Uh, everybody that wrote in, thank you for that. Everybody that uh, is going to write in, uh, thank you in advance. I will keep doing these every day until I clear out my emails so I can get caught up hopefully before, you know, 2019. Uh, I think I, I'll definitely have it done before 2019. I might even have it done before November because if I can just keep hammering away. Uh, but so don't just send me fluffy emails like you're never going to finish. That'd be that. There's the joke. Write me emails that say you're never going to finish. Damn it. Uh, or just write me an email that says one more email, which would be hilarious. Anyway, um, 
send all your stuff to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.